Hello and welcome to Owele Cat TV News. I am Antonia Mwokolo. The news headlines. Tinobu to flag off Abuja Light Rail May 29th. National Assembly passes bill to return first national anthem. Trump rakes in millions at Texas fundraisers. And in sports, Eric Ten Hag dismisses speculation over Manchester United future. Follow us on our social media handles at Obeleke TV. Visit our website at www.obeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Obeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back. Now the news in details. The FCT administration has said the commencement of commercial operations of the Abuja Rail Mass Transit System, also known as the Abuja Light Rail, will now be flagged off on Democracy Day, Wednesday, May 29th, by President Bola Tinubu at 1 p.m. The flag of ceremony was originally scheduled for May 27th. The Director of Press, Office of the FCT Minister Benga Oguleye, said in a statement that the commencement of commercial operations was part of ce celebrations marking the first year anniversary of the administration of President Tinubu. The federal government says the administration of President Tinubu is making efforts to reduce the cost of living and put more money in the pockets of Nigerians. The Minister of Information and National Orientation, Alhaji Mohamed Idris, made this known on Thursday in Abuja at the ministerial briefing on the first year anniversary of Tinubu's administration. The minister said the administration came on the strength of renewed hope agenda and had started laying a solid and enduring foundation that would make life better for the people. He added that the commemoration of the administration's first year anniversary offered the opportunity to present the government's scorecard to Nigerians by telling the story of what had been done so far. The National Assembly on Thursday passed a bill to return the national anthem adopted when Nigeria got its independence on October 1, 1960. First in the Senate, the bill passed for a second reading following its presentation during plenary by Senate leader Okbayemi Bamidele. Before its passage, the senators held an executive session for almost two hours, which was presided by the president of the Senate, Kotswila Papu. At the commencement of the plenary, Bamidele said those who were around in the 60s and the late 70s would attest to the fact that the anthem played quite a significant and crucial role in shaping Nigeria's national identity and unity, as well as in general that as high sense of value and personal belonging amongst the citizenry. After passage, Akwabio referred the bill to the Committee on Federal Character and Intergovernmental Affairs and asked, that, asked it to report back to the Committee of Whole as soon as possible. Let's go on a short break. We'll be right back. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.oweleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Oweleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back. Vice President Kashim Shatima has said that President Tinubu's administration is targeting to increase the efficiency of tax collection in the country. He reassured Nigerians that there are no plans to impose taxes on them. Shatima stated this on Thursday when he received a delegation from the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria at the presidential villa during which he solicited the institute's insight on attracting foreign direct investment through competitive company tax rates. The vice president also met with the at the Institute of Stockbrokers at the Villa, where he called for the complete overhaul of the system to attract more youths to leverage opportunities in the sector. He said the restructuring should include the strengthening of internal mechanisms to checkmate unwholesome practices by unscrupulous persons in the market. In an interview with State House correspondents after the two meetings, the president of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, Samuel Agbelui, commended the federal government for its efforts at addressing the challenge of insecurity. 
The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Yesom Mwike, says the FCT administration will build 10,000 low-income houses for the poor in the territory. Mwike disclosed this in Abuja on Thursday during the ministerial sectoral update on the performance of President Bola Tinubu's administration in the last one year. He said that the project will be captured in the 2025 budget under the President Tinubu's Renewed Hope Cities project. He explained that FCTA would provide the needed infrastructure to build the houses and allocate them to people who could not afford to build, stressing that they were not for the big men. The minister described land allocation as one of the most difficult problems in the FCT land administration, adding that the department was infested with corruption. Wiki frowned at the situation where developers asked for 300 hectares of land to build 20,000 houses, and after getting the allocation, they do not build the houses, but they allocate the land to people to make money. Kano State's Governor Abba Yusuf yesterday reinstated Mohamed Sanusi Septu as Emir of Kano, four years after he was deposed, saying the decision to return him to the stool is in the best interest of the state and its people. Yusuf, who signed the new Kano Emirate Bill into law, declared Sanusi's reinstatement as the 16th Emir of Kano and pointed out that the new law would bring unity to the people of Kano as well as foster sustainable socio-economic development. He issued a 14 48-hour ultimatum to the man who had replaced Sanusi, Aminu Adobayero, his brother, Nasiru Adobayero, and three other former first-class monarchs to vacate their palaces and hand over all Emirates' office property to the Office of the Commissioner for Local Government Affairs. But in a dramatic but curious turn of events, a federal high court in Kanu State last night stopped the reinstatement of Mohamed Sanusi as the 16th Emir of Kanu, as directed earlier by Governor Abu Yusuf of the state. Up next are stories on the foreign scene after the break. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground. Welcome back. On the foreign scene, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump raised tens of millions of dollars during a fundraising swing through Texas this week, promising he would support the oil and gas industry by backing new pipelines and restoring fracking on federal land. Trump has cut its support from the energy industry with a pro-fossil fuel and anti-regulation agenda and regularly criticizes President Joe Biden's policies to accelerate the energy transition towards a low-carbon economy. The oil and gas industry has boomed under Biden despite increased regulation and the more climate-focused administration, making record profits and pumping more oil and gas than ever before. The industry has pushed back against Biden's ban on fracking on federal land, a recent halt in approving new gas export facilities. In entertainment, Sean Love Combs, popularly known as Didi, was trending after a video of him assaulting his ex-lover Cassie Ventura in 2016 went viral. The hip-hop mogul took to social media to address the video, stating that he was a changed man and had gone to therapy. Cassie, in an emotional post, broke her silence and revealed that years of assault broke her and she was focused on healing. In sports, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has said his sole focus was on winning the FA Cup as he brushed aside talk of the final potentially being his last match as Manchester United manager. United bowed out of Europe before Christmas and limped home in eighth place, their lowest ever Premier League finish, as speculation continues over Boss Ten Hag's future. Mauricio Pochettino and Thomas Tuchel are among the names linked with the Old Trafford hot seat as Enios consider how to take the club back to the top. And just before we go, here's a recap of the headlines. Tinubu to flag off Abuja Light Rail, May 29th. National Assembly passes bill to return first national anthem. On the foreign scene, Trump breaks in millions at Texas fundraisers. Eric Ten Hag dismisses speculation over Manchester United future. And that's the package on our news bulletin. Kindly follow us on all our social media platforms at Uwilike TV. Visit our website at www.uwilike.tv. I am Antonia Mokolo. Many thanks for watching.